What's going on guys? Matt Tolson here. Welcome back to another video. As you can tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be going over my first thoughts on my brand new 2019 Santa Cruz V10. God, that's a mouthful. Uh, I'm going to be going over kind of what I think about it. This is my first full uh, full crown, full suspension bike. Uh, I've had a DH bike in the past, but not something this big. So I'm going to be going over my first thoughts on it, as well as give you guys a little information that you may not have known about the bike. So without further ado, let's get right into it. As you can see, I went with the 29 inch wheels. That's what uh, Santa Cruz has been uh, advertising a lot about lately, as due to the fact that they have won three World Cups. Well, they've won three World Cups. They've, they got, they won the World Cup, and then they placed a couple of their top uh, podium finishes, which is pretty crazy for a really new bike. Uh, most downhill bikes have been 27 and a half for the most part. And so they changed a lot of the geometry on the bike and made it so that it could fit a 29 inch wheel. Plus though, they do have a 27 and a half inch version still. Uh, I'm 6'7", so I wanted the bigger wheel just to kind of make a bigger bike because they only go up to an XL. Uh, for the 29 inch, they do medium, large, and then XL. And then for the 27 and a half, they do small, medium, and large. Uh, the 27 and a half bike probably would be better for somebody who's a little bit shorter. Uh, probably be easier to control the bike a little bit better. Uh, but I haven't ridden this thing, so I'm not going to give you a full breakdown. Kind of just give you a little info on it. As you can see though, I threw some Deity uh, pedals on there, just some bare claw pedals, you know, metal. Should be pretty grippy, uh, I've been riding them. I actually put a hole in my shoe already, so that should be interesting. Coming up on Utah, uh, two more weeks until we get to finally take this out. May take it out this weekend to test it out a little bit before the trip, kind of tune it up a little bit, but we'll see. Uh, so, starting right up front, one of the most important parts and special parts about this bike is the front fork. Uh, so they went with a bigger fork, obviously, to fit this bigger wheel. Uh, the 27 halves come with Fox 40s. Uh, there's the S package and the SO1, XL1 package. Uh, this one is the S, obviously. Uh, the XL1 has the nicer front and rear shocks, and then a few minor other things that you know get it to that $8,900 price tag. Really wasn't feeling that spending. Really wasn't feeling like spending that much money on a mountain bike, uh, especially for a bike that probably won't get ridden much, especially here in Arizona but would be nice to have. So I went with the S package, which is just fine. Still a great bike all around. Uh, but basically, so it's got the Fox 49s up front. The uh, 27 and a half has Fox 40s. Uh, don't know the difference. Both of them have 203 millimeters of travel up front. And then they both have these same rear shocks, the DHX2. Uh, this, this combined with the rear hanger uh, allows you to get about 215 millimeters of travel is what I was reading which is pretty crazy for uh, how much travel the front shock has. But, you know, with the, the one thing that I noticed that's pretty cool about these DH bikes compared to uh, my Hightower LT is that the whole rear half uh, moves with the bike, not just within the frame, which is pretty crazy. It allows you obviously to get more travel. Uh, didn't have that on my old bike, but should be pretty fun to test out. I've already run it, ridden it around a little bit around the street and it's just, it's just, it moves crazy. So it's gonna be a ton of fun on the bumps and uh, shouldn't have any problems, but won't bore you with that. Uh, you know, typical Santa Cruz, they run their Maxxis tires, great tires, have them on my high tower, no complaints. Uh, and then the same rims as well, the 29 inch rims that they run on the high tower, those are all the same as well. Uh, I think on the XL1, you get the carbon rims, not 100% sure on that, but uh, I assume so with that price tag. Uh, as we see up here to the middle, as I was telling you earlier, 215 millimeters of travel in the rear. Uh, the VPP, which is the virtual pivot point, and that's right here, that allows you to really extend and not only just use the sh shock, but to allow the frame itself to move to get that extra few millimeters of travel and then allow you to get the 215 in the end, which is pretty cool. Uh, you 34 tooth spoke up front here. Obviously, there's only one chain guides, of course. Uh, obviously that's pretty standard on any downhill bike. And then in the back here you got seven uh, rear spokes uh, allowing you to go from a pretty low gear to a pretty high gear. Uh, obviously it's a downhill bike, you're going to be going downhill most of the time needing those high gears in order to grind out the pedal through uh, turns, transitions, uh, while still going pretty fast so you don't spin your pedals too much. Of course you got the SRAM front and rear brakes and shifters. Uh, haven't had any problems. Shram's honestly the best in the business. Can never have anything say, can't ever say anything bad about them. Uh, they perform great, they're reliable, and I'm pretty sure they have a pretty hefty warranty. Not 100% sure on that though. Uh, but you most likely won't use the warranty. I've had them on my high tower now for almost two years. 
and I had them on my previous bike as well. Never had any problems with them, uh, and it speaks for itself, you know. Uh, but there's not much else to really talk about. It doesn't have a dropper post. Obviously, it's a downhill bike. Uh, I have to go take it in to get the seat chopped. Uh, it's a manual post, so and you only have about this much right here. So they didn't want to, you know, give you a small stem to start. So it's able, you're able to chop it and put it where you want. Obviously, you're not going to be doing much uphill pedaling with the bike like this. So you obviously want it kind of out of the way a little bit. I may leave mine here. Not 100% sure. I want to get a rundown, so I may take it out just so I can kind of figure out where I want the seat to sit and if I want to do it, actually chop it. Uh, it would hate to chop it and then I realize I kind of want a little bit more seat post. So I'm going to hang tight on that still. But, you know, can't really say much until I finally get this thing out on the dirt and put it to the test. So there's going to be a after riding review for sure. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, guys, so you can stay tuned for that. Uh, but nothing else. You got any questions about the bike, how I'm liking it, or anything for that matter, shoot me a text or shoot me a DM, uh, leave a comment on the video, whatever works, I will do my best to get back to you. And uh, yeah, let me know. Make sure you hit that like button, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.